usually we come in every day and we ask you guys tons and tons of questions and you guys tell us all the answers. But for this series, we are going behind the question and figuring out everything there is to know about that question for you. So you guys told us that 95% of you prefer to shop at independent businesses rather than big brands, which really stuck out to me. So I decided to go back to one of my personal favorite independent stores and figure out why that might be. And what I ended up discovering was much more about why people go to certain communities over others and why they feel comfortable in a certain place. I'm pretty well. How are you today? Doing pretty good. I'm the happiest person on earth to be an avid. Yay, welcome back. She's fantastic. She has had tons of different careers and all in all, she came back and realized that what she wanted to do every day needed to be something that impacted other people. And that translated into opening a bookstore after having absolutely no experience in doing that exact thing. I don't think that people's jobs have to be a direct reflection on who they are, but for me, I, I needed to know that I was spending a lot of my work time doing something I really believe, believed in, which is what all my other jobs were, but in addition to that, uh, that I was really enthusiastic about and was bringing a lot of joy to and got a lot of joy from. So obviously she's learned a lot over the last decade of being in the business, but it was really cool for me to see someone who had a vision actually bring that to fruition and to do so in such a perfect and well-suited way for the community that she was serving. We, like a lot of businesses, um, are continually trying to make sure that the entire community feels welcome here. We have on paper a really diverse city, but in practice and in reality, you can't necessarily see that when you come visit certain areas of town. And so we are trying to figure out ways to make sure that People from all different walks of life and communities in Athens feel welcome here, um, but it can't be through some flashy marketing campaign. Like it has to be genuine. And so for us, that was uh, achieved. We were able to um, expand our audience a little bit, or significantly rather, by making sure we had uh, books in stock that reflected their experiences, and then author events in schools and the stores that spoke to their history and their experience. She wants the front of her bookstore to make sure that no matter who walks into that bookstore, that they can find a story that they identify with in some way or that they relate to, which obviously is hugely important. And I think Abbott does a fantastic job of making sure that that is the case. It's hard to exactly explain why things end up on the front table, but it's a combination of what we booksellers love and what we think a, a reader needs to see. And also a lot of the time I mention to people that one thing I love about books is that they allow you to explore ideas and worlds that you might be unfamiliar with and whether or not you have curiosity about it before you actually pick up that book, it's a way to safely explore those ideas. On the flip side of that, she talks about how books are kind of a, a safe way to explore because you can find other stories and other experiences and just literally sit with it and read about it. Like, it doesn't seem like such a revolutionary idea when you're talking about reading a book that about something that you don't know about. It's just learning. But when you think about it from the perspective of like, I want to sit and experience someone else's emotions. I want to feel the things that they feel so that you can have empathy moving forward in your life. It seemed to me more and more that Avid and, and her part of the independent business community, that was its mission of, of being able to provide those safe pathways of exploration that were as easy as picking up a book off the shelf. As a white middle class person, I've seen myself in books and on books my entire life. Right. But for someone who does not match my description, that is um, a relatively new phenomenon that they can pick up a book and see someone that looks like them or speaks their language. You know, it's a powerful experience for someone to be able to see themselves reflected in literature. So a lot of our school visits uh, result in kids realizing like, oh my gosh, this author who grew up only speaking Spanish like me 
wrote all these books and is visiting me and talking to me and he has a career in this. It's really awesome. <laughs> Over the years, when something really wonderful happens, or unfortunately has been more often the case, something really traumatic happens, um, people kind of show up at AVID to, to just see each other and spend time together. Most notably, I think about the um, Pulse nightclub shooting mm -hmm. in Orlando. I remember that day, like everyone was just really shaken up. And I remember coming into uh, the store here, and there were just people of, just tons of people roaming, some people talking, some people hugging, but it was a day of the week and a time when I wouldn't have expected that many people to be shopping. And they weren't necessarily shopping, they just were looking to have a sense of community, to look into each other's eyes, to recognize that like you are, you are someone I may or may not know and you're important to me and your life matters to me. So it's beautiful and it's really heartbreaking, but at the same time, I'm really happy that we've created a space where people feel not only comfortable, but really at home here. When Janet started talking about the way AVID has formed its own kind of like nucleus of community, it was really honestly kind of overwhelming because she, she was talking about how like you go to the places that you feel most comfortable in your lowest lows and your highest highs. There's a concept um, called the, the third place um, in social research, and the concept is that you have uh, your first place, which is your home, your second place, which is work, and the third place, and that's a place out in the community um, where you feel like you can truly be yourself uh, that's not work or home. And so for some people, that place is you know the neighborhood bar, other people, it might be a coffee shop. Um, for some people, it might be like the feed and seed agricultural store. Um, and for a lot of people who love to read, it's a bookstore. Um, and chain bookstores can serve that purpose, but since they do have a little more of a generic feel, it's not the same feeling as you would get uh, like here or at Acapella Books in Atlanta or, you know, Acapella. me too. Like, so there are all these, we have a lot of people who are regulars here um, who just come in some people come in every single day and just say hi and hang out and they know all the booksellers and then we have people who you know just come visit every summer uh, but it's just it's sort of like a touchstone and you remember who was working when you came in you remember who you ran into what conversations you had where you were standing in the store uh, if you buy a book here you remember that you got it from here I went down to Athens to find out more about independent businesses, but what I came away with, honestly, was the idea that it is a great thing to find a third space where you are comfortable, whether that be online in a community that you find there, or at a bookstore, or at a coffee shop, whatever it is. It's pretty incredible to be able to have that option to go to a place where you feel the most comfortable, the most at home. Is there something that you want to know everything about? Comment below, let us know what it is, and we'll go after it for you.